Microinteractions can make or break the feel of any website. There are those small details that can leave a lasting impression. In today's tutorial, I'll show you how to create smooth, engaging hover effects using GSAP and Webflow to take your website's experience to the next level. The site of the day winner from about a month ago was this website right here. It's a website from Adolce & Gabbana. And what I noticed immediately was these small hover interactions on these little buttons right here. Um, there's like a swishing effect on the text, if you can see it. And the icon retires and hides from the left side. And here I think it's from the right side. And then there's also this volume button, which has the same swishing effect. Uh, and that's what we want to recreate today. So I'm going to head into Webflow first. I already created the styling for this. Um, it's basically just a main section and a, a flex container inside that with the three buttons right here. Uh, twice the blur button, which is like this one, and once this volume button. And uh, it's basically a very like simple styling. Um, they have a P tag inside of them which we are gonna turn into um, individual spans with the split type library in a second. And then we have this icon container right here. Um, and this right now is set to overflow hidden. But if I turn this to visible, you can see the other icon, which is gonna slide in and the first one is gonna slide out. Um, yeah, and I think that's it actually for styling. I already connected um, the Webflow website with um, Slater. Um, and we can see this if we go on the actual site, go into the DevTools, and we can see that Slater has been loaded. If we refresh, that's this uh, console log right there. So I guess we can start um, with coding. So first we're gonna write the function for the animation. We're gonna use a function instead of just starting straight away with the GSAP code because um, we want it to be a variable because the one animation comes in from the left and the other from the right and we want to have the option to have both. Um, so we are just gonna create this function. Um, this is gonna take a reference to the button, a reference to the right icon, to the left icon, to the characters, which we're gonna create soon. Um, the distance which the icons are gonna travel. Um, and then some stagger options, which can also be a variable, like if you want. Our main entry point for this is gonna be this event listener right here. Um, can type today, which is gonna be a mouse enter. So when the user is gonna hover over one of these buttons right here. Um, and then we can create a function here that is supposed to be called um, when the user is hovering. And inside this, we can create a hover timeline. So we are gonna start with GSEP straight away. And that hover timeline is gonna have three tweens. Um, the first tween is for the two icons. We're going to actually reference them at the same time because they are going to do the same thing. And inside here, they are just going to travel along X axis. And the duration is going to be the standard duration of half a second. Okay, I don't need the S. Now for the easing, we're going to use the ease back dot out uh, with a value of 1.7. If you look really closely, then you can see that the icons kind of go past their furthest point and then kind of bounce back a bit. So if you go here, then you can see there's kind of this like, like bouncy effect. And if we go to this ease visualizer um, and we go on this one, the back out, this is of course exaggerated a bit, but it's basically exactly what we need. So it goes further than the final point and then comes back, which creates this like bouncing effect which is exactly what we want. And yeah, that's actually it, I believe, for now on this tween. And then if you want this to be on a new line, I don't like that. 
Then the next twin is for the characters. Here we want to um, animate the filter, which is going to be a blur of five pixels, which is going to make that swishing effect uh, for us possible. And the duration is going to be really short, only about 0 0.2 seconds. And the stagger, it's going to set it to stagger options and say what those are when we actually call the function. And the ease is going to be um, a standard power three out. That should work. And we want this tween to start at the same time as the previous tween. So that's why we put this um, smaller than sign. And for the last tween on the function, um, we're going to also reference the characters. And this one is for swishing back out. So if we just keep it like this, then it would blur the characters, but not unblur them again, which we don't want. We want this swishing effect so that each character is blurred briefly, but then um, is not blurred anymore. Um, so, so this is going to be really similar to this, actually. I'm just going to copy that to there and just set this to zero pixels. The stagger options can be the same. And this is going to start a fraction of a second later um, than the previous tween. And that's going to give us this swishing effect. And then we, of course, have to add a mouse leave event listener. So when the user does not hover anymore, sorry, that is not true. Um, and there we can just put a simple tween, a simple two tween, again for both icons, as we want them to move back again um, when we stop hovering. Just to go back to their original position, the duration is half a second again, but I think we can leave that out actually. Um, and the ease is the same as this one. And that is it for the event listener. I think that's it for this function. We're going to reference our parameters first. And now, of course, we still have to reference the characters. And for that, we're going to use the split type library. So I'm just going to call this uh, type split. And then we call this library right here, split type with a blur span. So the blur span is this one right here, this p tag. And, and then what we're going to do is actually turn that span into individual um, spans of like each character. Um, and that we can do if we write types, characters, and tag name, just spans so we can get a bunch of spans. And now if I already do this, then, then we should see, um, not there, then we should see the individual spans. If I go to the elements and I go to the span, and then here you can see the individual spans. I'm gonna animate. Yeah, and then we're gonna use that to reference the characters character is one and then we're going to use a document query selector all for this because we have multiple spans that we want to animate um, and that's going to be button one and then a blur span and then inside that span every character class Ugh. And now we should be able to call the function. Let's just see. The create hover animation. Um, what we had first, the button. So I'm gonna put blur button one inside. And then the icon right, icon left. What else? The characters. Um, the distance, I'm, I'm just gonna say uh, 45 pixels right now because I think that's also what I tested it with. And the stagger options are just gonna be um, an each with 0 0.04, which means each stagger animation is going to take 0 0.04 seconds um, until it finishes. So let's see what we have. Let me just 
and just refresh um, and this is not doing anything let me just see did I forget something button dot add event listener ah because this is not oh, of course because this is not a function because it has to be a big event listener a a because it has to be a capital L so now if I refresh we can see this smooth animation on the button and now I'm just going to do the same thing for the second button let's remove this so I reference all the spans and the buttons and the icons and now we can call the same um, function but now we're going to turn this into a minus 45 so it goes to the left instead of the right and here to the stagger options we're going to add a from end which is going to make the stagger start from the end instead of the beginning and switch from right to left instead of from left to right so let's see how this looks so now here we have the nope that was not what i wanted of course i have to change these um yep this should work now the previous animation is still working and this one should go the other direction exactly and yeah and now we can still look at the volume button i'm not going to do this with a function because we only have one volume button um and it's going to be really um, similar to the other one um it's also going to be a we're going to use a create selector for the volume button volume dot 10 and a query selector all for the individual volume bars and i'm going to show you what those are volume, not like this, sorry, this volume bars so we have inside here um we have the volume button and and inside that we have just um normal divs that are just one pixel uh, in width i believe yeah and in height just 10 um, and we are gonna make them move up each of them and then switch through as well just like the text basically and yeah um, so this is gonna be really similar we're gonna need a event listener on the volume button which is also gonna be a mouse enter again and then a callback function when the user actually hovers over and then, and now we're going to add a timeline again hover timeline gset timeline and then on that timeline we can add two tweens and the first one is just a two tween again i'm going to reference the volume bars and then what we're going to animate again is the filter um with a blur of four pixels this time and a duration of i don't know uh, a quarter of a second i believe was good and we're going to minus eight uh, in the y direction which is gonna make that thingy i do not know how to say that exactly um and then the stagger here is going to be 0 0.05 because we have five bars um and then so uh, five bars a uh, times that is 0 0.25 so that it's um so that it's clean um and the ease is just a standard power three out yep and that should work and then i can actually show you how this looks at the moment so now if we refresh and we hover um the bars are gonna fade out and be kind of um like blurry and move up but they are going to stay there so that's why we need the second tween as well um which is going to start um as soon as the first stagger has finished um actually this is throwing me off and then another two tween again on each of the volume bars with a stagger um we're gonna set the filter actually i can just copy this we're gonna set the filter back to zero um 
the y back to zero so they are back in their original position and the stagger can and the stagger can say the same and it's going to start as soon as the first stagger has ended um yeah i think that should be good let's refresh that looks smooth yeah and i remember setting the bars actually to an opacity of 0 0.5 yeah so what we want to do as well to add is um to animate the opacity of the volume bars to um 100 um when we hover um and that's gonna like just make it a bit more clean so we can say a volume bar for each bar and then bar dot style dot opacity just equals one and then uh, we can add a mouse leave and button dot add cursor mouse leave to reverse that opacity animation again so i can just copy here set it back to 0 0.5 and that should do it. That's much better. Yeah. So those are three micro interactions for you. Um, I hope you liked it. And yeah, see you in the next one.